Welcome to another segment of the Victorious Woman Broadcast, hosted by Pastor Victoria Dunstan. Welcome to another segment of the Victorious Woman Television Broadcast, where we're manifesting victory in every area of our lives. I am so excited that you decided to join me this morning, and I believe God has some great things in store for us. The Lord has been dealing with my heart and showing me some things in dealing with people. So you have to be connected to the right people. And if you get connected to the wrong people, you're going to end up in some things you never thought you would end up into. And one of the things that we're going to talk about this morning is the spirit of rebellion. To rebel means to have open resistance against any type of authority or authority figure or any set rule or guideline. And if we read the scripture, we understand that the word of God declares and teaches us that we are to obey the laws of the land. And we are supposed to, uh, you know, we're, we're supposed to govern ourselves according to his word. And when we don't do that, we end up with the hand of God against us. And this morning I have with me Bridget Norvell, and she's going to talk to us about a, li a little about her journey from rebellion to the place to where she is right now. So welcome. Hi. Thank Hi. you for having me. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how you started on the path to rebellion. Well, it was at, as a child. Um, just everything that my parents said to me, or my family, because I didn't have a two-parent home. It was more of I, I grew up with my grandmother. But everything that they told me not to do, I did. And I was determined to do it because they told me not to do it. <laughs> I mean, that's the typical behavior of uh, a regular teenager. But I think if there's some teenagers watching right now, they may not understand that a spirit of rebellion can take you into things and situations that they never ever thought possible. What kind of things did you end up getting into as a teenager? Well, as a teenager, um, I got into a lot of drugs, uh, sex. I, I just experimented on sex at an early age. And because I was told not to do it, you know, the right way of doing it. It wasn't explained in a Christian way because I wasn't brought up in a Christian at atmosphere. But, you know, sex and drugs and alcohol and everything that I, I couldn't do, I, I, I did. And, you know, that's where I started. So that at any point that people try to tell you after they saw that you were experimenting with these things and they say, you know, you ought to stop that. You know, you know what you're doing is wrong. How did you respond whenever people would say that to you? I, I was the person that I took correction. But when you have that rebellious spirit, you're taking correction on the outside, but you're still determined to do what you want on the inside. So it's no matter what you want to say to me, I'm going to accept what you say to me, but do I really want to change? So were you a happy teenager? I mean, did rebellion make you happy? No, I, I was very unhappy. Were you depressed? Were you, did you feel bad about yourself? I went through a lot of trials of um, depression. I tried to commit suicide when I was 16. And... The rebellion, with it starting so early, it started at age seven, and it's because of me really rebelling against my, my mom and her rejecting me. So that's where it came in. So when it started so early, it, it, just, it just festered up in me, and, and that, that's how it grew. So, uh, I mean, rebellion festering up inside of you, rebellion growing, you were trying to commit suicide at 16. At what point did you decide that you needed to make a change? Um, I, I, I've always felt there was a higher power. There was something more for me. And I wanted 
change, but I didn't know when, where was the change. I, 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 I dipped in witchcraft and all different things. Witchcraft? Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bible teaches us that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. What did you do in witchcraft? Um, well, I was always, like I said, I wasn't brought up in a Christian atmosphere, so witchcraft wasn't really anything, it wasn't wrong. To, to us, you know, I was told, oh, you're brought up to be um, a psychic. You're, I, I used to see things and different things, but it was a calling on my life. And the more and more I became rebellious, the more and more I, I felt the tug from, from God. So what I had to do was separate myself from my family. And I went to, when I was 18, I had my daughter and I went to a palm reader. And she told me, your mom is trying to kill you. And you have to cross water seven times. And she told me that I'm going to move seven times. And, you know, um, we have been taught, you know, my pastor <laughs> to teach me, you know, that, yes, they, they can see your future. They can see things. They might be accurate, but they're still using the witchcraft. Right. They're using, they're actually operating off of familiar spirits, mm -hmm. spirits that are familiar with your family. But tell me this, did you end up moving seven times? I did. You moved seven times because it became a self-fulfilling type of prophecy. You just felt like, oh, this is the fifth time. I have two more times to move. Well, it, it's not self-fulfilling. It was more like Things kept on happening in my life that I had to move. I felt I had to move and where God had to take me. And I was searching for him, but searching for him in so many different ways. I wanted answers in so many things, and I couldn't get it. And all I know my family would tell me, oh, just open up the Bible, read it, uh, get you an egg and break it and, and look on the floor, and they'll tell you what your future is. And blah, blah. I said, no, there's more than that. Then I would see my, my, my mother going to the, the voodoo man paying $500, and I'm like, oh, I'm not paying nobody $500 for nothing. So when I was 20, I went to Virginia, and I was selling drugs, and um, I went. So your rebellion took you over into drug dealing? Yes. Wow. It took me to drug dealing, um, prostitution. Wow. It took me to stripping, um, just B&B. &B. Wow. Just um, thinking love was, was being abused. I remember a time that my daughter's father dragged me and beat me because I refused to leave him because I thought that was part of love and that was part of my rebellion. So it's... So something else tremendous began to happen for you in Virginia. What, what happened? Well, I was in a hotel and I was, I was selling drugs and this lady came, um, she was witnessing and, you know, evangelizing and she knocked at the door and she, you know, the hotel room and she told me about, you know, she asked if she'd come in with some other ladies and she was talking about Jesus. And I'm like, okay, I know I've heard, I know the Bible, you know, I've seen the Bible, I know my grandmother said God, but they always use the Old Testament. Who's this Jesus? And she, she was telling me the love of Jesus, and if I ever wanted to get out of this atmosphere, her door was open. And it was a situation that happened that I had to go live with her, and she was a pastor. And I lived with her and her kids, and she really had such a patient with me, and I was rebellious. I lived with her for a year, and it took me about a good seven months just she just pouring into me for me to give myself up to the Lord. And, and I'm like, okay, and I will never forget that when I got the Holy Ghost, it was in the shower, and I just felt everything just coming out of me, and then I, I went to th church with her, and I the Holy Ghost fell upon me, well, it wasn't a great experience, too, because when the Holy Ghost fell upon me, I was persecuted because I was in her home, and I think it was that week she decided to let me go because she thought, it's not going to help, you know. And, they, you know, there was members pushing her to let me go. You know, she's not going to change, and you're wasting your time. But she, she, just, she just felt 
God has something for me. God show her and know that she, I, it was something for me. So she wasn't going to let me go. When I received the Holy Ghost and I shouted and I, I was persecuted and more you were, rebellion. You were persecuted for, for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it was simply because of church people not understanding because they didn't believe that you had an authentic change. Yes. And wow. that, that's where they rejected me. And she didn't reject me. She knew, you know, because she knows she's been pouring into me. And what happened was when I had to leave, um, I was married. Another part of my rebellion, I married a ex-convict. <laughs> Found out that the man was wanted for murder. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, and the FBI came to my house, and I, I, I still stayed with him and married him in jail because... I was refusing to believe that he was, you know, he did, he murdered two people in Alabama. So I had to go back to Alabama for his trial, and that's when I had to leave the covering of, the pa of my pastor. So you married a man that was a murderer. You were living with the pastor, so I know she could see that maybe you shouldn't marry this guy. Was that a part of, did she see that at all? Well... I married him when I was 18. Oh, you married him before you yes, got there? Yes, before I got saved and everything. You know, because I was down the road of destruction. Mm -hmm. And when I, when, I, when I met my pastor um, and she brought me in, God knew what he had for my life. And this was 20-some years, 20. 20, year, 20 yes, yes. So. Excellence is a spirit. Excellence is a spirit. It starts with something with a desire, and then God from there will take it further if you want to go further with it. You ain't got to live where you live. Who says you got to live there? Now, it's all right if you like living there, but you ain't got to live there if you don't want to. You ain't got to drive what you drive. Because, see, everything starts on the inside. If you can dream it, if you can dream it, you can see it. And you can have it. See, people got it all mixed up about stuff. It's not about stuff. It's all about what belongs to you. But we got to go back to the basis of seek ye first. You understand? Why are you seeking God? All the other stuff will be added because, see, God is a God of excellence. <laughs> Why are you seeking God? All the other stuff will be added because, see, God is a God of excellence. And as you seek him, he forces your spirit to change about the way you look at stuff. Zechariah was a man that loved God. Zechariah obeyed the commandments, but Zechariah had a little problem believing God for the impossible. There are some things that seem impossible, and God is going to perform the impossible. But you got to shut your mouth because you're giving entrance to the enemy against the very thing that God wants to bring to pass in your life. You're confusing heaven and you're confusing hell. You're confusing your spirit because you're praying one thing and saying something else. Come on, Zachariah. I got to shut you down for nine months because there shall be a performance of this thing. In other words, I'm going to do it so much so that I will shut you down so that the will of God can be done. Oh, my God. There are some things that God has just ordained in your life. <laughs> there are some things that God has just ordained to happen in your life. It's the thing that don't let you sleep in the middle of the night. It's that thing that pushes you in your back. You are just not that good to want something that bad. God has put that in your spirit. Pick up your copy of both messages today at the Victory Zone Bookstore. knew what he had for my life. And this was 20 was some 20. year, 20, yes, yes. so a, lot, a long time ago. Yeah. And then my family was telling me, oh, you're crazy when I received, you know, just become and save. But she told me, still stay strong, still believe. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want me to go to Alabama for his trial. 
because his trial was coming up. But, you know, she said stay in, tr in touch and stay under the covering. But, you know, when a sheep go out, yeah, and they're a babe. Wow, wow. So this morning, you may be watching and you may be able to relate. You may be in a place of rebellion. You may be in the house of God. You may be attending church. I mean, you may be right there, but yet you know that your life is in a downward spiral. You know that you're into things that you shouldn't be into. And we need to pray with you. We need to believe God with you this morning. We need to touch and agree with you uh, that, that God will transform your life and that God would begin to turn situations and circumstances around for you. And, you know, just like she was saying, she was in the church, but she had such a rebellious life that people did not believe she really wanted to change and that may be exactly where you are right now and it really doesn't matter what people's opinion of you uh, seems to be today because it will change tomorrow you just need to continue to serve the Lord you need to make up in your mind that nobody not even in church is going to stop you from doing what God has called you to do because people are fickle they will love you today. They will hate you tomorrow. People change up on you. The only thing that doesn't change is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why if you haven't given your life to Jesus, you need to do so today. You need to pick up the phone. You need to give us a call. You need to tell that prayer partner, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm ready to give my life to the Lord. I'm ready to make the change. And I believe that God will meet you at the point of your desire this morning. And you, 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 you have to understand this, that rebellion is going to lead you into a place where you don't want to go. Rebellion, can, like, like Bridget was saying this morning, rebellion took her to a place where she was selling drugs. She married a murderer even though the murderer was was uh, hadn't even been tried yet she married him anyway and because of that she ended up in situations and circumstances that god never intended for her to be in so pick up the phone give us a call and let us pray for you because god has some good things for you so tell us something what began to happen for you after okay you backslid we know 10 years after you gave your life to the lord you backslid you came back to the lord and then uh, you would sometimes show up in church high. Talk to us about that. Well, um, I backslid, and I, like uh, Pastor said, 10 years. And now I'm, I, I was ridiculed so much. I'm now searching for a new religion. And it's Rasta. I start growing, my, I start growing dreads, you know, more rebellion. So, so how is dreadlocks rebellion? Dreadlocks... When you, you grow dreads, there's a process. Some people say you let it grow like a tree and, you know, just let it grow out. Um, the new way is called locking. And you either take a comb. I hear some hairdressers take a comb. I used to use my fingers. Wow. And you have to just twist your hair. So you're twisting. And I'm still going through a rebellion, and I'm twisting and twisting. And I started with in Mississippi, where I met my former husband. And I'm selling drugs. He's selling drugs. Um, I'm still going through my little thing. He's still going through his. But I'm now locking some stuff and seeing my, 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 my whole life going downward. And I will never forget, I told my husband, I said, well, I'm going to move to Florida. And he said, don't leave me here. I want to go with you. And I'm like, okay. So we came to Florida. And I'm still locking in some things into my life as my hair grow. And my, my life is still going downward. And I'm like, well, God, if you have a calling on my life, why is it going down so much? Well, I was locking in some things in my hair. And it's like the spirit of Medusa. Wow. You, the spirit of Medusa. Yeah, wow. you know, the, the snakes and the, you're locking in these things. And, you know, a woman hair is our beauty. We love to get our hair done. But what was we locking in? So my former husband started ending up in jail. Left Mississippi. Everything was fine. Got here. I would say about three months later, he ended up in jail. I'm smoking marijuana again. I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything all over again. And in again. church. And I got back in church, and I'll never forget. Um, and my daughter's like, Mom, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to church. 
it's time for me to go back to church. She said, you're smoking a blunt, Ma. And if everybody don't know what a blunt is, that's another form of a joint, but bigger. <laughs> and she's like, I can't believe you're smoking a blunt going to church. I said, well, we got to go somehow. <laughs> so I got into church, and the spirit was so high. Remember, I got saved at 20, and I felt the Holy Ghost, and I, I got the spirit of the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it was dormant, and I didn't get true salvation. So when I got into this church... I felt salvation. I knew how to shout. I knew how to scream. But now I need deliverance from my rebellion, from things that was holding on to me, my past. And my hair was down to my back. How long ago did you cut it? I cut it, um, I don't know if it's been a year yet, but around six months, I, I, I just felt the Lord say, he didn't tell me to cut it. Because God know his child. And if he would have said, cut your hair, that would have been rebellion. Because you would have said, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it was more like, you are always searching for me. You want more of me. There's something you have to let go. And I went to my pastor. And um, his name is Pastor Reginald Dunstan. <laughs> And I, I had a dream because I normally, like I said, I have dreams. And, and, and it was really baffling to me. And, I'm, and, and there's something the Lord wanted to tell me. And I got up and, and, and I started praying. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And he's like, no, you're not ready. So I went to pastor and asked him about the dream. And he said there were some things that we don't want to let go. And God will show you. I'm not going to tell you. So when I got in the car with my husband, and, and, and I, I was like, well, what is he talking about? He want me to cut my hair off? I'm not cutting my hair. <laughs> but you know what? I knew because of the deliverance in my church, I knew that's what it was. But I was rebellious, and I kept on saying, no, that's not what, I, that's not what God said. It's something else. It's something else. But as time went on, he, you know, the Lord ministered to me like a child. And I felt a need to cut my hair. I kept on getting dandruff. Everybody get dandruff, but my hair was falling. I'm like, well, what is going on? I said, I need to cut it. But then the enemy used my husband. And he's like, no, you're not going to cut it. And I prayed. And this is when... I was feeling true deliverance, and, and, and I would, you know, get depressed. But the little, I, what I did with my husband, I cut my hair little by little. And I kept on feeling things dropping off. And I didn't want to go through the cycle anymore. I went through bankruptcy, watching my husband going back and forth to jail, just, every, just backsliding again, being in church backsliding. Wow. Thinking I'm sleeping with someone that it was okay and I'm in church. Wow. So, so once you cut your hair, what changes did you see? How did that help you? The changes was um, it released me from bondage. It was a bondage thing. And it helped me see me. I, I saw a new beauty. I used to smoke marijuana because I, I felt beautiful. When I got, when I received that high from the marijuana, I felt so beautiful and my dreads and everything about me was so beautiful. But when I cut off my hair, I saw that true beauty, that bondage that was holding in, in my life. I mean, there's people that comes around me now and see me and don't know me. And it's like you and I are sitting here, we, we have conversation, you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm regularly in your face. I mean, there's people like that now, and when I, I'm like, hi, they're like, hi. And I'm like, Bri this is Bridget. And I never knew that was so, it was so much of um, a bondage. And it's just such a, a whole new look, a glow that, it is now saying, look what you were holding on to. Now I can work in you. 
Well, I don't know where you are this morning, and I'm not. We're not here preaching and saying dreadlocks is evil or wicked or whatever. What she's saying this morning is there was some things that she needed to disconnect from because it kept her connected to the Rastafarian type of religion. It kept her connected to a habit of, of smoking marijuana that she was not able to break on her own. And the Lord began to deal with her and, and God began to set her free. What is it this morning that God is asking you to give up this morning? Because until you surrender whatever it is that has become, that has come between you and God, you're never going to know real deliverance. You might go to church. You might experience a little bit of happiness, a little bit of the blessing of God, but you're never going to have total fulfillment. There's a place in God that where no matter what it is that you have to walk through or go through, you're at total peace. You're at peace in your mind. And ain't, there is no trouble. Like, it, like trouble in your head, trouble in your mind. And God wants to set you free from that yoke and from that bondage. And the only way for that to happen is for you to make a decision that there is nothing that I want more than the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we are so blessed that you're here with us this morning. And I believe that you've heard some things that, that God is going to use to help propel you into your destiny. And what we need you to do is just give us a call. Call us, call in, you know, let us pray with you, uh, get some counseling from your pastor. But you need to do whatever it takes in order to walk in victory. We love you and God bless you. And next time, walk in victory in every area of your life. To rock us, that all your haters and everybody that was laughing at you has to now take a look and say, my God, look at how Jesus really loves them. I mean, they couldn't get it back in the days of old because they didn't have what you have. But you have the seed of God resting on the inside of you. He has dealt to you a measure of faith. And your faith is being fed tonight. And you are being ignited tonight to believe. Leave God past the dead situation. And it doesn't matter how long it has been like that. If you continue to trust God, and God is responsible to bring that thing to pass, because your tongue is now connected to your spirit, and all of heaven is getting behind you and making this thing come to pass. I can't wait for the testimony. I can barely wait to hear what the Lord is going to do in this next season. Thank you for watching the Victorious Woman broadcast hosted by Pastor Victoria Dunstan. Please call us at 407-295-7972 or email Pastor Victoria Dunstan at victoriadunstan at aol.com or visit our website www.agapeword.org.